that technology of Flex is helping consumers see the light in science, travel, and even in augmented reality. But can the stock keep up with the promise of our digital world? While we're out here in San Francisco, we wanted to check in with Flex, the outsourced manufacturer formerly known as Flextronics, and a longtime Kramer fave. Here's a stock that's been on fire lately, up nearly 30% last year, up another 13% since the beginning of 2017. The reason? While Flex is widely viewed as an electronics manufacturing service play, the truth is this company's an innovation factory that helps so many industries build out their own products. They got their fingers in everything from connected medical equipment to virtual and augmented reality, uh, connected cars, even personalized Nikes. All this for a stock that even after this big run sells for just 12 times earnings? Who says there aren't some cheap stocks left in this market? I think this is an exciting story, which is why I was thrilled to get a chance to speak with Mike McNamara, the CEO of Flex, earlier today. Take a look. All right, we know the old Flex, Mike, and thank you so much for being on, as being this you know, kind of the industrial manufacturing, and it's not that sexy. But the sexy stuff I have always felt historically I shouldn't talk about because there's not a lot of money in it now. But I think there will be. When we're out here, what do we keep hearing about? We hear about virtual reality and artificial intelligence. But no one's telling me about the technology in terms of what you and I will use. It could be made by Flex. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of technologies. You know, in this whole um, Internet age, or what we call the intelligence age, is all these end nodes intelligence age. beginning connected. I like that. I'm going to start using that. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, the, everything's been connected to the Internet for many, many years. Right. Now, all of a sudden, the, the things on the edge of the network are now connected and they're intelligent. And they're actually responding with real time. They have data. Right. And you now have new data sources that you can actually build new business models on the back of that new data that you have in the field. So the actual device itself is now intelligent. Okay. But you got into, you talked about VR and AR. And yeah. I mean, a, I think they're gimmicks. Convince me they're not gimmicks. Oh, no, they're not gimmicks. Well, how, convince me. So first of all, gaming, you can you can argue, is fun. Yeah. Um, and 440 but, million people game. But it, it's a massive market. Right. And it has massive pro, pro, uh, profitability associated with it, and it has a huge potential. But even beyond um, VR, but as you get into AR, which is really the augmented reality, right. this is going to help industrial applications. It's going to help industrial manufacturing. It's going to help us create more and more efficiencies in the systems that we manufacture, it's gonna help you. So you'll actually look at the warehouse rack with your goggles and right. it'll tell you how many parts are in that rack. Okay, well then tell me how many people are not needed because of this. Well, I don't think you're, you're gonna get less people, it's just people are gonna work differently. Okay. And I think every time there's new technologies, there's new innovation and there's new invention and there creates new opportunities to, I mean, you didn't have VR glasses before. Right. Now you have them, someone has to go build them. Someone has to design them, they have to build them, they have to write the content you. for it, the software. And you have to do that. We'll do part of it. So okay. we're, gonna, we're gonna build all the enabling technologies that allow these new cool devices to come to market okay. in a very productive way. Right, speaking and of it's not just the devices too, I just remind you, it's not just the devices, it's also the manufacturing technologies that right. you use to build these things have to also, we, we also think those are pretty cool and sexy. Now the <laughs> companies that do it, and I know that it's all confidential, but the companies that do it, what do they bring versus the manufacturing, which to me is the key part. I guess the intellectual property, they, they transfer to you and they trust you? Well, it's the company has to think out, well, how do I monetize it? Okay. What's the business model? What's the commercialization? What is the consumer? So they have to think about what are the problems they're solving with the technology? And then once you figure that out, then you need to back up and say, how do I manufacture it? I right. mean, how do I actually bring it to market? Because I'm going to create new invention. And, I, and very often that new invention requires innovating on manufacturing process technologies, either the way it's built or even the process technology itself. Okay. So we need to go build that. So that's what we do for our customers. So side by side, we're a great innovation partner because we'll bring all the innovative process technologies. They'll bring an understanding of the market and the problem they're trying to solve and together that's where you really create well, something. Well, let's take an example of, of the here and now. Uh, we know that the biggest trend in retail is personalization. And we do that because the commoditization has wrecked the margins. Mm -hmm. So if you can personalize somehow, yeah. it, it, worldwide people want personalization. They want, if look, if I were LeBron, I would want my own sneak. I'm yeah. Kramer, I want my Kramer <laughs> sneak. Nike yeah. looks to you to personalize. Yeah. Well, then the whole Nike relationship is built on taking manufacturing to the next level. I mean, and, and basically innovating in the manufacturing process so that you can more effectively regionalize your product 
And as you more effectively regionalize your product, you can more accurately match the consumer demand. And once you, and then you can start thinking about personalization. So if you can get out of the commoditization and central manufacturing and get into distributed manufacturing and regional manufacturing along with personalization, then you actually meet your customer's needs and desires and you get your <laughs> sneaker that you just talked about, you actually get it at a cost-effective price. Okay. But the only way you're gonna to get to a cost-effective price is to develop the manufacturing technologies and the, and the distribution and the supply chain and, and really digitize your supply chain so that you can actually get to a cost-effective okay. personalization all, all this solution. is very sexy, but boy, some gross margins in some very traditional high reliability, reliability solutions, industrial and emerging industries, communication enterprise, these are bedrock things that have given, mm -hmm. besides the sizzle, the stake that has gotten your, your stock up endlessly since I've seen you. Yeah. Yeah, we continue to drive. I mean, the, the two that you mentioned, the industrial energy, right. automotive, medical, those, we put those into two different groups. Um, you know, in 2010, that represented like roughly 15% of our overall revenue, mm -hmm. and today it's like 38% of our overall revenue. So it's actually a huge transition over the course of just uh, five years. And what that does is, and, you know, there's plenty of sexy products in there, too. I might well, give add. me some. I mean, I, to me, I thought that the healthcare was, I mean, I, you know I come what? and I say, look, if I could wear a patch that makes yeah. me be a hospital. Uh, I could eliminate a lot of what the healthcare system is spending on. Yeah, and especially as people move more and more towards chronic diseases, as we start solving right. real problems around cancer and heart attacks and those right. things, you end up having to monitor health for longer periods of time. Um, it's actually arguably more effective to have continuous monitoring technologies like digital health, right. rather than go in the hospital and get periodic checks. And these are all technologies that are coming out. We're using some of these technologies that are coming out of the cool and sexy things like health trackers right. that we can now apply across into continuous blood glucose meters. Okay. So, and then you also have the connected technologies and you have the fact that everything's connected. Do the I have edge connected, connected car here? Well, you're going to have, well, for sure you have you? a connected car in there. Where, where, are, you, where are you in that? In we're, that food we're chain. right in the middle of enabling it. <laughs> well, I mean, I know. So think about I love a connected the companies car. that make chips for you think, you th it. I love the car companies, but someone is manufacturing, and it's you. Yeah, we've we've got uh, a number of different initiatives into the autonomous vehicle. Again, we're not deciding the use case or, right. or how we're going to sell them, but you've got lidar technology. Someone has to go build those right, right. and create those technologies. And when you think about the autonomous car of the future, the amount of data and the processing oh, of right. the data is off the charts. And now, all of a sudden, you need servers in cars. So who does? Who's the who's the king of uh, doing server storage in our whole CEC division? That's that's Flex. So as these new 5G technologies come on board, which are requirements for really moving to autonomous vehicles, we're right in the middle of it because we have a huge telecom well, business. I, I think you're in the middle of pretty much everything, <laughs> and that's one of the reasons why the stock has been such a home run since you come in. By the way, I love the low risk and high reward that Flex has given us the whole way. That's yeah. Mike McNamara, the CEO of Flex, F L E X. What a winner. Stick with me. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.